Hello there! Settler 1.1 has just been released and uh, so I thought it would be an appropriate time to continue my little series on tutorials for using Settler. Today I'm going to focus on preparing your machine to use the exporting feature of Settler and by the way also the importing feature because imports also rely upon Pandoc. So we are going to cover in this tutorial how to install Pandoc and LaTeX on your system. While I'm focusing on macOS because the installation of Pandoc on macOS is a little bit more difficult than on other platforms, most of the installation instructions apply to Windows and Linux as well. So just keep watching no matter what uh, distribution you use and keep watching especially if you're using macOS but most of, uh, most of the instructions should be pretty straightforward. Enjoy watching! This tutorial assumes that you've just installed Setter and have installed nothing else. So it's a clean install so that you can follow every step. First you can see we have created a document which we will be using to demonstrate the exporting functions. The export to HTML always works out of the box as you can see here. The document will be rendered perfectly as HTML. As you can see in the address bar it will be down, uh, put into the temporary directory. But if you want to export to anything else you have a lot of formats available, for instance docx, you will be prompted with an error that Pandoc has not been found on the system. This is perfectly normal and we'll be installing it right away. To install it, simply head over to the documentation of Settler and in the getting started section you have instructions on how to install Pandoc. Pandoc itself is a free and open source software and can be used for much more than simply exporting from Settler. Also, you don't need to have Pandoc installed, so you can install Pandoc at a later time if you want to. And you don't need to install it at all if you don't need to export from Settler. So, installing it on Windows is pretty straightforward. Simply head over to the download page where you can see all the packets available, including an MSI installer, which is what you will be using if you are going to install Pandoc on Windows. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see that you have more options on macOS. You can either install, use an official installer or use Homebrew. But first to the Linux users, if you are using Linux, it's pretty easy to install Pandoc because your packet manager should already find it by searching for it. But as we are on a Mac, we are going to use Homebrew to install Pandoc on macOS. So first we need to install Homebrew. To install Homebrew, you'll need a terminal, as has been said in the install instructions, which is basically one simple sentence. So we'll just copy and paste these instructions into a terminal. So open up a terminal and then simply paste the line into the terminal, hit enter and you will be asked for a confirmation so hit enter again and enter an administrator password so that Homebrew can install all preconditions that it needs to be fulfilled. You'll see a lot of console output that you don't have to mind, uh, but it will take some time because normally Homebrew, if you have never used any coding uh, stuff, Homebrew needs to install the Xcode command line tools, which will take some time. So depending on your computer speed and your internet connection, it may take some time. So don't hesitate, simply wait until it is finished. After the command line tools have been installed, Homebrew will install itself, which also may take some time because Homebrew itself is not the smallest program, but you can use it to install almost any useful additional package that Apple doesn't ship with macOS. So just because we're only using it to install Pandoc doesn't mean that you can't install anything else. So just keep reading 
what Homebrew can do for you except installing Pandoc. After Homebrew has been successfully installed, which also takes some seconds depending on your computer speed, it should present you with a message that Homebrew has been successfully installed, which you can see here. So now we need to install Pandoc. So head back and we can see there is a command written brew install pandoc, which is exactly what we are going to do. So go back into the terminal and just enter brew install pandoc. This will command homebrew to download and install a pandoc, the newest version by default, as you can see here. This should take uh, much less time than installing homebrew itself. Here you see we are ready. And in case you want to upgrade Pandoc, simply run brew upgrade. It's pretty straightforward and easy. After installing Pandoc, Settler should automatically detect that Pandoc has been installed. So let's just export to open document and you see it works. Uh, our Mac has opened it with text edit because LibreOffice was not installed. But if you have installed LibreOffice or OpenOffice on your computer, it should open it with the appropriate program. So now you can export to nearly any format. The one format you cannot install to right now is PDF. So if we are trying to do this, you can see that you need LaTeX on your system. So let us head back to the document, uh, documentation section on the Settler homepage. And in the getting started section, you have also instructions on how to install LaTeX. LaTeX is installed on each system exactly the same. There is an installer package which just works like any other software. On macOS you have two options, a bigger version and a basic text installation which only includes uh, the core of LaTeX, which is what you use. So let's just proceed to the download page. You can see here we have basic tech, so let's just download the package which may also take some time because it's still not as small as you might expect. And depending on your speed, it might take some seconds until the installer file has been downloaded to your system. As soon as it's downloaded, simply click on it to run the installation. As you can see, it's a pretty straightforward installer on Windows and Linux it looks appropriately to the system again you are asked for the administrator password so that later can install the compiler it may take some time uh, if you opted for installing the huge package it will take even longer obviously so Make sure that you only install the big package if you are going to use LaTeX commands directly and if you want to create LaTeX documents uh, bypassing Settler. After it's done, it should present you with a confirmation that LaTeX has been successfully installed. On macOS we can optionally move the installer to trash because we are not going to install it a second time, obviously. And if we head back to Settler, Settler should automatically detect that LaTeX has been installed on the system and should successfully export your document. As you can see, it's pretty empty, but it's a correct PDF. To show you a little bit more of the default LaTeX template that Settler ships with, simply let's include an image and as we are on the internet, we are obviously gonna search for a cat. Just decide on a picture, right click it and copy the image address. Then head back to Settler, enter the image using the markdown image tag. We'll be using cat as a caption, insert the link and Settler should automatically correctly preview the image. So now let's export it again and you can see that the basic template already 
make sure the image is placed appropriately and it even provides you with a caption. Now you're set and should be able to export any document you want.